Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me in this video. We are today going to discuss how to become a data scientist because there is so much hype around it and it seems as if everybody is trying to become a data scientist nowadays. Now I'm not saying that it's technically not possible. Technically anybody can become a data scientist. It shouldn't take more than maybe let's say 6 months to get started and then build upon that. Of course that process could take longer maybe couple of years but point is is it even worth it because i have seen there are so many videos about how to become a data scientist and they talk about everything which a data scientist does and we will also address that so that you are covered on that part but before that we need to understand is it for you because everything is not meant for everybody honestly i am not condescending but point is everybody is at a different stage in their career our passion our skill sets are different to learn a new skill you need to put lot of money and more than that lot of time and effort is it even worth it maybe if you put so much money and so much effort in some other direction that can fetch you better results than maybe trying in data science or machine learning so just because everybody is talking about it howard has called it as sexiest job of the 21st century it doesn't mean you to need to get into it disclaimer i have my own course on machine learning and data science and if you are really interested in it you can check that out but we are not here to talk about that we are primarily trying to answer what is data scientist job how to become that and specifically should you even try so let's jump right into it so this is a post i have written on my blog on my website you can check this out on this url agenda of this post is divided into these four categories or these four topics so first thing we will see the job profile of a machine learning engineer or data scientist and other similar positions in the market so that you understand the difference and the various options because it's a vast field there are so many job profiles that if you don't understand them correctly you can get confused and you may end up applying into job positions where you shouldn't or may leave positions which are relevant to you then we will also look at the ideal candidate because as i have mentioned everything is not meant for everybody so we need to see if this is something where we should put our money and efforts and as we are talking about job profiles and ideal candidates for these roles we also need to look at the skills which are required for data science and machine learning and then finally the big question is it for you so if i were to talk about the overview of machine learning engineer or data scientist job profiles and i'm using these two terms because these are very commonly used and you will encounter them quite often on major job portals like glassdoor nokri monster whatever you use but don't ever forget to do your own research when you are trying to apply for these openings so whether you are using indeed class to linkedin or nokri whatever portal you use use them to do some research on the kind of job profiles there are the kind of requirements skill set they are asking for as these job profiles are really new sometimes they use machine learning engineer sometimes they use data scientist in the job description sometimes they may simply use something like product analyst or research analyst so you have to go through the job profile to understand it better you need to see what kind of skill set they are asking for because machine learning and data science can be confused with something which is closely related to one other field and that is big data engineer or big data professionals these guys usually deals with spark pig hive these kind of skills big data engineers are geared more towards the towards technical infrastructure of the data how you maintain the data how you manage it so spark pig all these are frameworks which are used in big data industry these job profiles does not require you to make predictions these job profiles are primarily concerned about how we can create a data lake how we can manage our data so that performing data science or machine learning on that data is easier so there are two sides of it one is data management and the second side is performing machine learning on that data so data scientist profile or machine learning engineer will primarily work with 
performing machine learning or predictive modeling on the data they are not concerned with the infrastructure of course they will be but it's not their primary job they are not required to know things like spark pig hive when i say not required you need to take it with the pinch of salt because nowadays there are so many job openings and everything is overlapping with each other so you may encounter certain data scientist job positions where these things might be required but overall when we say data scientist job they are primarily looking for four kind of skill set and let me show you that and these are four skills which are primarily required for a data scientist position ml fundamentals here stands for machine learning fundamentals so you need to know all the major algorithms like linear regression logistic regression clustering pca neural networks and things like that supervised unsupervised reinforcement machine learning models so basically when you get access to a data and your business requirement is to do something if you don't know about these models you don't know what kind of technique you need to apply on that so ml fundamental will cover that you need to know what kind of technology what kind of algorithm is more appropriate for a particular business requirement and then of course the tools so in machine learning in data science primarily we use r programming language or python these two languages are dominating 70 to 80% of data science industry but you can also use java c++ and few other languages so but here they are primarily into r python r studio jupyter notebook and these kind of tools are required and then of course as we are dealing with data science we need to understand the applied statistics so whether you are talking about standard deviation mean square and things like that you need to understand them and one of the core activity of data scientist is data visualization having said that i have seen videos where they try to underplay the visualization part and they talk about how you are supposed to deliver some some world changing big result which is true but every company has got different requirements there are a lot of companies like bank insurance they are simply looking to use machine learning to address their business problems they may not be looking to change the world they may simply trying to find out a fraudulent transaction you will be working with average end users from their operations who are looking to get desired output desired information and in such scenarios visualization is very critical because you are dealing with business professionals who don't understand technology or programming and visualization is key to communicate the message let's say you are working with the marketing team they are trying to come up with a new campaign and if they want to know if a particular factor can contribute towards better sales if you present a report without any visualization they will have tough time understanding it so that's why whether you are using r or python visualization is very important and you need to learn different kind of libraries like ggplot2 in case of r or cborn in case of python or whatever tool your company prefer but you will have to use some kind of visualization some kind of storytelling to make it easier for your business stakeholders to consume so these are four skill sets which are primarily required so when you go through these job portals doing your research you need to see if they are asking for r python or if they have mentioned anything like linear regression logistic regression knn k means clustering things like that if they are asking for those things then they are asking for a typical data scientist profile but if they are asking for spark pig hive big data then they are asking for different things now i'm not saying one is better than other but they both are entirely different stream so if you are in spark pig you don't need to bother too much about these things unless you are really interested in them and you really want to pick them but to begin with we need to understand that they are talking about entirely two separate fields they are not same so this is the overview of a typical data scientist job profile and skills which a data scientist need but always perform your due diligence always perform your research whatever job portal you use visit that and perform some research let's say in india we use nokri.com
here if I run data scientist you can see that it has already given me these keywords like R, machine learning, Python, data science, SAS, predictive modeling, Hadoop. Hadoop is more into big data so we will also run that and see what kind of requirements it has. So first run data scientist. Let's see if we can find any big company here. So we have Dell. So in Dell they are asking for Arima which is part of time series model then machine learning algorithm regression modeling which is linear regression logistic regression things like that so this is a typical data science job profile let's run big data on this we can also run Hadoop but big data is more generic So we have Sapient, again a big player in this field. So here if you see we have Hive, Spark and all these frameworks which are part of data management. It's more like at the architect level and here they are talking about Java. So these two fields are very different. So that's it about the job profile. Let's see who is the ideal candidate to learn data science and when I say learn I am assuming that you are yet to get into these fields you are planning on learning them if you are already there then you don't need to bother about these things and you can go through this post I have mentioned additional details here like SAS or SPSS these are older technologies they are being used in the field of data science for a while now so you will find quite useful information here these are some of the keywords some positions which you can run on these job portals and when we talk about ideal candidate and the reason why I'm talking about this ideal candidate is because some time back I got a call from one of my friend now this guy is already working at a manager level he works with a healthcare company a big company here in India he's primarily into supply chain management but his current role requires him to run few queries in the database system, get some report and do some kind of visualization with them. And that's how he got this idea to get into data science. Problem is he's already at a manager level. If he were to get into a new course, something online or campus based full time courses at his level, it will make more sense if he tried to get into management based profiles because he's already a manager. If he learns data science, if he invest a lot of money and time into it and after that even if you get a good job in data science field he will be working as a programmer most probably at the junior level or mid senior level even in that case it's a kind of regression for him not a progression so for him it doesn't make any sense but let's say you are a student or somebody who's having um, let's say eight years of experience less than eight years of experience then I will say you are ideal candidate to learn data science or for that matter any new skill of course it comes with the assumption that you are not happy with your current profile for example last year I was in US in Kansas to be specific a guy came to me for mentorship through a non-profit organization he had three to four years of experience as customer support executive. He wanted to learn business and system analysis. He was primarily looking to change his career. Now I suggested him to learn data science instead because business analysis or machine learning, both of them were new to him and he needed to learn them from scratch. So for his profile, machine learning made more sense because it is going to offer him promising career then system analysis and he ended up doing a bootcamp course from Kansas University. Of course, for some other profile, business analysis may make more sense. And in case of this particular course which he did, he paid around 16,000 US dollars for that. So again, everybody won't be comfortable with paying that kind of money. But as far as skill is concerned, machine learning is going to be a better option for him or anybody in his position. So if you are a student or somebody with less than five years of experience, this is one of the best field for you. If you are somewhere between five to 10 years of experience, 
you need to review your situation if you are not happy with your current career progression you should definitely learn machine learning because for next 10 to 20 years machine learning artificial intelligence they are going to dominate every aspect of our life every aspect of the industry so you will see lots of jobs in these industries and the best part they are not just jobs they will also come with good financial benefits and good growth because if you interact with seasoned IT professionals and if you are already working in IT industry with 10 to 15 years of experience you will understand that things are kind of stagnant if you are somebody who is with experience in older technologies like mainframe now mainframe is a very good technology there are lots of products based on mainframe but the problem is these jobs are not very well paying and there is very limited growth in it whereas if you compare it with machine learning and data science there are not only enough jobs in the market but these fields are also very promising in terms of career growth in next 10 20 years and just to add some more for seasoned professionals with more than eight years of experience you can also look at management courses like executive mbas especially for non-technical professionals because you may find them easier to comprehend and they could add more value because they will help you with vertical growth of course if you are really passionate about machine learning and ai these are really good and you should go for them and if not management then maybe you can learn something like scrum or togaf which is related to enterprise architect so those kind of certifications pmp these certifications will add value to your resume your cv you don't need to learn something from scratch but again you need to see can you do it because it's a technical field it will require you programming it will require you to learn statistics so you are going to learn a lot of new things and i have seen people who invest ten thousand dollars in a course or one lakh two lakh rupees in a course and then halfway they realize that this particular stream this particular field is not meant for them they are having tough time understanding the concept and they realize that even after they complete the course they will have tough time actually performing these jobs but they are stuck because they have already given so much time and money so again for these professionals you can look at things like scrum toga pmp instead of hardcore programming oriented fields like machine learning so based on these guidelines which i have mentioned earlier if you decide to learn machine learning and become a data scientist you will need a course or some kind of book to learn machine learning because information in an organized way will give you better sense of it but do not enroll in any expensive course unless you are sure about this go for economical and affordable books or online courses something which you can afford to lose in case you decide to turn your back towards it so please do some research because i have seen there are lots of people who don't need to do it or they can't do it but they still get into it and then they get stuck but having said that these fields are really promising for students for anybody who's having technical background or if they are comfortable with learning technical or mathematical things it's really good honestly i won't say it's very easy to learn these things but it's not very complicated either you just need to have that knack for learning these things and with persistence and time you will learn it so start small and then take it gradually from there these are some of the skills which you will need to learn if you decide to work in the field of data science so you need to get your hands on r or python because these are most common languages of course if you are a programmer with some background in java c plus plus you can also use them but if you are a programmer then i guess it's easier for you to pick up other languages also in that case i will suggest you to go for something like r or python then you will have to learn applied statistics because you don't need to learn everything about the statistics but it's very important to have some background there some basic background high level background which will help you understand these things then machine learning fundamentals like supervised and supervised reinforcement learnings and then to begin with at least all the major machine learning models and of course once you are comfortable with these things you can take it further and as i have mentioned earlier always start with a pilot project or trial run so that it doesn't hurt you if you decide to pull back 
But overall, it's not very tough to become a data scientist. If you have any question, please leave your comment. Thank you.